Yo everybody, what's going on? This is Keegan from K-Man Reviews bringing you the next episode of Review Recall. This will cover a pretty good chunk of the albums that came out in February, minus a few exceptions, and those will be delayed to the March video, but let's not waste any more time, let's dive right in. This album just had me smiling the whole time, how could you not love this? Wow, this one might just be my favorite Griselda project released, period. I was completely suckered into this in a way La Machina couldn't grip me. So consistent, so memorable, and a real emotional punch to it. Love this. It's good. Like, it's good. It's quaint, acceptable art pop. Not the most memorable thing the band has ever done. It's not bad, just not amazing. Look, if you're a Yo Gotti fan, this double album will certainly keep you fed for new music. If you're not really a fan like myself, it's kind of just another meh rap project to me. Fitting to the title, this album is much slower, more soulful, and beautiful than the first collaborative effort. I personally still prefer that one, but this is a very well-rounded EP. Apparently, both of these parties have no desire to end this partnership, so hopefully a full-length collab is in the future soon, and if it's anything like we got here, I for one can't wait. Yeah, this is kind of just like a Cardi album, just not as interesting. I didn't hate it at all, and there were some good moments on here, but not much of this really stuck out to me, and honestly, I'd just rather listen to Cardi. Not that bad? It's pretty one note, just a lot of slow, sentimental country songs, really. I was quite pleased to hear that Am I the Only One seems to be the only one of its kind on the album, but at its heart, it's predominantly a modern country album, but minus the sheen of radio country, which you can look at that however you want. I'm just more impressed that I came out of this with more positives than I accounted for. Another stellar project from this underground hip-hop family, and I'm telling you guys, if you aren't tapped into these artists like Black Chidori, JR, and especially Patty Honcho here, change that. There is some amazing stuff. So this was my first exposure to Mitski's music. I heard a lot of praise about her 2019 album Be The Cowboy, which I never actually checked out, so seeing this in the new releases, I was excited to finally give it a listen, and I think I set my expectations a little bit too high. Don't get me wrong, it's still a good album. A lot of the ballads on here are very similar to Lana Del Rey, especially in Mitski's vocal timbre, and some of the instrumentals are pretty solid, like on Should've Been Me, but I don't know, this album just kind of feels uninteresting and generic. It's a perfectly acceptable album, but with all the hype I've heard around her, this kind of just felt like a disappointment. I liked this a lot more than most people I've heard. I thought this was mad, funky, catchy, vivacious. I was nodding along the entire time, and it also just left me in a good mood by the time that that final flute melody finished the record. It doesn't overstay its welcome, I think it's a perfect length, this is just a pretty great album if you ask me. You know, out of a lot of the country I've taken a listen to thanks to this series, this was actually kind of good. I liked the pop-centric melodies, it all felt very catchy and warm while still clinging on to the country genre label. Certainly not the best country album I've heard by a long shot, but hey, I expected this to be a lot worse. This might just be my favorite project from the Roach Mafia. Very clean, crisp production, yet still maintaining onto their abrasive characteristics. Plus, New AP is honestly one of the best songs I've heard from them. Great stuff here. I liked this album in the same way I liked Machine Gun Kelly's Tickets to My Downfall. It's certainly very accessible and streamlined, and it's far from her best. But goddammit, this was just a fun collection of pop punk songs, and I can't complain about it if I tried. I always thought Block Boy had an enjoyable cadence. He demonstrates such on this latest tape of his, but nothing really stood out on an individual standpoint. God, this was really good. I'd say my only gripe with it is that Slash's presence across the record is very minimal. Some of the guitars, even if you just played them to me for the first time, I couldn't tell you Slash had a role in them, but Miles' vocals are phenomenal, and there was an amazing energy all the way throughout. Yeah, I loved it. Pretty good three-track EP here. Wasn't crazy about that closer, though. Just felt overly slow and didn't really leave a strong impact, and a very weak finish to any project in general. 
But still, it was an enjoyable pop listen. Gentle, soothing blues jams, but delivered with a delightful cadence. It's so feel-good and uplifting. If you're unfamiliar, check this out. So this is basically just the tracks from the offline version of Peggy's LP album, which I adored, put onto streaming. So to just hear these is a treat, and surprise, surprise, I think it's amazing. I like it, but not as much as other people seem to, though. And I think that mostly boils down to me not being into dream pop as others are, but I can't deny there's magic here, and even at the 18 tracks, almost 90 minutes in length, it was a very pleasant and enjoyable listen. Mm, I wanted to like this more, but this is just kind of mid and boring. God, what did we do to deserve this instead of the C tape? This was bad. I think people are harping on this way too much. Although it's certainly not a perfect EP. Like, come on guys, it's called Slut Pop. Of course it's gonna be a bit raunchy and blunt and in your face lyrically. Did y'all really expect, like, deep metaphorical lyrics from this? Seriously? However, I do think the production is pretty mid. There are some catchy melodies, but for the most part, this just feels like standard pop loops with no flavor whatsoever. As a whole though, I think this one is alright, and for a 16 minute listen, it breezes by rather quickly. I don't think it's that bad. Come on, how can you hate Snoop, especially when he's putting out mad quality recently? And I'm always so happy every time he drops something new, and this is no exception. I am actually extremely surprised how much of this stuck with me. I don't even think there was a track on this album that was outright forgettable, so color me impressed. I was not expecting to fall head over heels for this new Scorpions album. I kind of just expected it to be like an old rock band trying to reignite like ACDC. But man, these guys still really got it. Uh, it was alright, definitely some standout moments, but also a pretty decent chunk of forgettable stuff here. You can take it or leave it. Probably the weakest project 2 Chains has released in the past 5 years, which is definitely a bit of a letdown as there were a lot of generic trap songs on here. But hey, that opening track was pretty great, and the collab with 42 Doug was certainly one of the highlights here. It's not a bad album at the end of the day, but for a rapper who's been often praised for his consistency, it was a bit of a letdown. Yo, I had a damn fun time listening to this. Very cohesive, a lot of enjoyable surprises like Elton John on here, that song Picture is absolutely incredible. Plus, Eddie sounds amazing vocally on this. This is a great record, I loved it. Best Kodak album. Which is still maybe like a 6 or maybe a 7 at best, but still, it's Kodak's best. The opening few tracks of this were pretty good. I'd say up to about track 4 had infectious grooves, good amount of personality, and fun, lively pop feeling. The rest of it though just... You know what? God damn it, this was fucking fun. I know people are really shitting on this album, and to an extent, I get it, especially with the last leg of this album being pretty boring and uninteresting, but honestly, the first leg of this record minus Suitcase Full of Cash was pretty great, and at least for me, the album didn't really flop hard until playing with fire, so I just kind of thought this was solid. More emotion, better production, feels very fresh, just an all-around great album. Not gonna lie, I expected to hate this, but at the same time, I enjoyed their last album, The Nothing, and I know most people didn't, and that fact kinda holds true for this album as well. I didn't hate it, but it's not as instantly gratifying as The Nothing was, but this album certainly had its moments, and I just kinda walked away from this satisfied. I thought this was pretty good. Certainly some of the bangers were a bit underwhelming and kinda plastic, but a lot of the more soulful and passionate slower songs were amazing. It kind of balanced out in the end, and in my opinion, I don't think anyone will enjoy the entire thing, but it's only 38 minutes and an overall enjoyable listen. Man, as someone who really liked As It Is back in like 2017 with the release of OK, this was certainly just OK. Not bad, but aside from the set it off feature, there was really nothing here to write home about. 
Alrighty, folks, and that is going to do it for the end of Review Recall. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. But yes, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.